Hey guys, Derek J here. It's December 5th, 2016, and yesterday was the Free Rossathon. If you're not familiar, Ross Ulbricht is the alleged creator of the Silk Road Marketplace. Uh, it's where people could buy and sell things online, and the primary currency was Bitcoin. And so this interested me as a Bitcoin user and someone who wants to surf the web for different m materials and products I can buy online using the new digital currency. I heard about Ross's arrest in 2013, um, which was the, the first ending of the Silk Road. And unfortunately, um, he was really run through the mill in court where the court wanted to make an example of him. They ended up charging him with uh, a bunch of different victimless crimes and ultimately sentenced him to two life sentences. Um, just remarkable, way more than most murderers and, and uh, you know, huge, like, empire drug criminals get. Uh, he didn't do any of that. It's a little alleged that he sold mushrooms on the website, like, once. But this is a real big concern to me because it, it really could mean the end of Internet freedom as we know it. Uh, a man who hosted a website was found responsible for the things that people on his website did. Um, so he didn't even do these things himself. He's not even have alleged to have done um, the, the types of drug sales that were done on his website. So anyway, I thought it was important. I wasn't able to attend the free Rossathon last night, uh, but I still wanted to get a video out there so that people could know in a tight package the 10 most important things to know about the Ross Ulbrich case because uh, the, the fundraiser that happened yesterday was for an appeal. So the family, the Ulbrichs, are not giving up. Uh, Ross has more support now, more than ever, and he's appealing the decision by the federal court, and hopefully he can be free. You know, those two life sentences, they're just not going to cut it, and he's not he, he, he's a good guy, so he deserves to be out. If you're a Bitcoiner, if you're someone who believes in free trade, uh, he's one of us. So it's really important that he has your support. And my effort in making this video is to inspire you to go and down, to um, send some Bitcoin or whatever currency you like to use to support the Ulbrichs because uh, it's very expensive to purchase justice in the U.S., and that's exactly what needs to happen. Yeah, it's immoral. Yeah, it is not the kind of justice that you and I might like to see. But that's the way it works. You buy your freedom. And right now, Ross is suffering behind bars. And it could just as easily be you or me. And he made the world a better place. So here are the, the 10 things you absolutely need to know and tell everyone you know about the Ross Ulbricht case. So the bottom line is, he didn't get a fair trial. But there is hope. So I'm excited for Ross's appeal. You know, I was there at his original trial outside the federal courthouse in Manhattan holding signs, you know, 30 years to life for hosting a website. And I was really disappointed to see that the jury was kept so much in the dark about the facts of the case. So it's given me a lot of good reason for hope, especially in the past few days, what with the stories of... Um, the government suppressing evidence in the trial and actually having a lot of corruption within their own ranks. So how about these corrupt feds, huh? Well, there's a bottomless pit of shocking facts that have come out since 2013, but I've narrowed it down to the most critical things, and they are, number one, from day one, the feds bent over backwards to prevent facts from coming forward. Ross has been accused of hosting an honest website, but nothing was honest about the depiction of the Silk Road in court. Um, the jury was sequestered or, or threatened to be sequestered and holed up in a hotel like the O.J. Simpson trial, kept from all news media and, and um, any kind of facts uh, that they could look up themselves so that they're not influenced. But also they were told they might be bust in, you know, like this guy's some kind of drug criminal that's going to have a hit out on uh, like a mafia boss on the jury who's serving on his um, <laughs> over his trial. It's crazy. Um, the judge kept out all knowledge of Bitcoin. They were going to have uh, an explanation by an expert to 
explain to the jury in layman terms what Bitcoin is and how it was used and how the site operated. But even that was kept out of the trial. And so they were just left completely in the dark about what was going on in this website. And, you know, of course, people fear what they don't understand. So if people aren't given an opportunity to understand what was happening, <laughs> then they're certainly going to fear him and find him guilty. Um, also, the or the um, show trial, as I would call it, it was just completely orchestrated and stacked against Ross. He wasn't allowed to know who was testifying against him. Uh, he couldn't have his own people who he called to testify. And it, it looks like the government even knew about the corrupt agents um, who we've now found out about in the past couple of days. Uh, they were stealing from <laughs> themselves from the government agents. Um, they they first they stole Ross's bitcoins, and then some of the agents who were involved in that theft thefted from the government agency itself. And so, of course, you know why wouldn't a thief be a thief? Well, they're stealing from Ross. Why shouldn't they steal from the government? That's I guess how they thought of it. Well, Ross's attorney. Um, Joshua Dreidel went on to say that the government withheld crucial information related to the investigation of the agents through a secret grand jury process in San Francisco and argued that his client was depraved, uh, deprived excuse me, of a fair trial. Number two, it turns out that the real crime started when the feds got involved and it hasn't stopped since. It's still continuing. These, these feds are still stealing from each other, trying to run off to foreign countries with the money. Um, you know, these are the real criminals. Uh, in fact, former Secret Service agent Sean Bridges confessed that as part of a team investigating the Silk Road, the anonymous um, marketplace, he secretly stole around $800,000 worth of Bitcoin from the site. And that's in 2013 dollars, uh, Bitcoin value. It's much higher now. And placed them in his own account. So it's this double standard of, oh, we can steal this, but you can't steal from us. And the guy, this Sean Bridges guy, was out on bail after admitting and, and confessing to this huge theft um, out on bail, and guess what he tried to do? Flee the country. Uh, instead of attending his own trial, he tried to get out of here, and he was caught at the airport and uh, rearrested. <laughs> Just really stupid. Um, these, these are the real criminals. Then Carl Force, he's another one that you need to know about. Uh, he was investigating the Silk Road as um, part of the Baltimore-based task force. Well, Force, that's his name, took an additional he took on other personalities like he was he was doing some undercover work where he was pretending to be personalities interacting with Ross um, who he tried to unsuccessfully extort but he actually used other names as well uh, that were outside of what he was permitted to do by the, the government so he was trying to extort Ross himself not just for the agency so information about Force and another corrupt agent was kept out of Ulbricht's Silk Road trial, and Force was arrested and even pled guilty in June. So these, these are the real criminals. They actually have crimes involving victims. Uh, Ross is not alleged to have harmed anyone. Number three, that murder-for-hire charge, it's not a thing. It's about creating an atmosphere of fear. And so Ross was allegedly, well, he was charged with a murder for hire out of, uh, I believe, Baltimore. But the charges are still pending. They've never been brought forward. It looks like the case is never going to happen. So somebody could be charged and arrested for anything. But unless evidence is put forward to show that they actually did it and they're convicted and, you know, they have a fair trial where all the evidence is put forward and people can see for themselves and verify well, then you can't believe it. It's, it's innocent until proven guilty. You know, that's a pretty good maxim to live by, and there's been no evidence that you can find or that I can find. Nothing has been put forward to suggest that Ross actually engaged in a murder-for-hire uh, situation. So that's just something that the government has been putting out all throughout the trial, 
And it's just a way to, to slam someone. It's, it's like throwing around the word racist or pedophile. It's just one of these words you could just throw out and say, and you don't have to prove it. Oh, well, you know, he's a guy's a racist. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah murder for hire charge. There's no evidence of that. Um, it was brought up even during his sentencing, even though it never appeared in the trial itself. It, it was brought up during his um, sentencing to justify the double life sentence that he got even though, again, he was never convicted and it's been sitting idle for years, not prosecuted, uh, you would think that would be, of all the charges that he's, he's facing, that would be the one they'd go after, wouldn't, th- wouldn't they? I mean, not hosting a website. That's not sexy. Murder for hire. I mean, come on, go after that one. That's the, that's the real meat. That's the juicy one. But they didn't. So what does that tell you? Um, Ross is a compare a, a compassionate, caring guy. And we know this because he's currently, while in federal prison, helping tutor fellow inmates so that they can get their GEDs, you know, the the people who are eventually going to leave the place. He's helping them improve their lives and have a better life. You know, much like he did on the outside, he's spending his life helping others. And in fact, no victims came forward during Ross's trial to say that he hurt them in any way. Number four, it didn't stop online drug trade. So, yeah, maybe if, if you want to um, buy the government's line that Ross made the Silk Road, well, then he opened the door to the dozens of marketplaces where people can have pot and other fun things delivered safely to their houses as easily as shopping on Amazon. And even though he didn't hurt anybody, federal agents kidnapped him and threw him in a cage for a double life sentence to send a message to the rest of us. But guess what? That message hasn't sunk in to anyone because people are still using online drug marketplaces, and in fact, more now than ever. I mean, killing the Silk Road probably did more to promote the idea of online drug trade than than it did uh, when it existed openly. Um, And Ross was free. Number five. The media have been both the biggest heroes and demons in this case. I think this is an important one to keep in mind. That this was like independent journalists were attending the trial and and bringing out the real truth, while mainstream journalists were spreading propaganda and lies about the case to to promote that atmosphere of fear, you know, and control, um, to control you. You know, and to to scare you into not using these new avenues of uh, getting what you want. And it's, you know, showed the importance of websites like Wired and Vice for covering the real news. And I think built the reputations of a lot of great journalists who covered the trial. Number six, Silk Road gave Bitcoin life. Yeah, okay, Bitcoin had been used to buy pizzas and some other stuff in the past, but the use of Bitcoin clearly correlates with the rise of Silk Road's popularity. And while correlation does not mean causation, I have to wonder if the largest online drug marketplace where people can use uh, this new digital currency um, helped inspire its its widespread adoption. Um, I think it did. Silk Road is still the most common association people have in their minds when they hear about Bitcoin. I'm promoting Bitcoin every day, and most people are like skeptical. Oh, I haven't heard about it. And then it's like, oh, have you heard of the Silk Road? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, I know. Yeah, I've heard of this Bitcoin stuff. I have some friends who, oh, yeah, never mind. (laughs) So Bitcoin hit its all-time high since 2014 yesterday, and it's, um, it's there today and growing in part thanks to the start it got on the Silk Road. Number seven, it's been over a year since Ross's sentencing to double life. Um, You know, time can fly when you're on the outside and enjoying your freedom, Uh, but keep in mind that it has been a year that Ross has been suffering, uh, oftentimes in isolation, you know, not just from the outside world, but even within the, the federal prison itself, Uh, It's a totally unbalanced situation where the punishment doesn't fit the crime. And if you care at all about justice and about helping good people, uh, then you need to keep this in mind every day. The the only right thing to do is to set him free now. 
It's got to be costing hundreds of millions of dollars so far to, to run the investigation, to um, have the jury trial in, in federal court, all of these task forces, uh, you know, all of these employees and government agents who uh, were involved in the arrest and, and locking him up, the, the prisons. This is costing a lot of money. And for what? For running an honest website? Number eight. Whether Ross made the Silk Road or not, websites like it are doing good for the world. So not only are they becoming more popular, but they're actually doing good. Uh, the war on drugs is bad. The, the war on drugs is a war on peaceful people. That, that's the thing that's harming them. You know, when agents bust in your door for smoking a joint, you know, that's the harm. Not that the joint isn't doing anybody any harm. Uh, you know, maybe a little bit of cancer but that's you know that's your own um you know your own body your own choice uh the war on drugs does far more harm than the drugs themselves and the silk road gave a way around prohibition sort of like um speakeasies gave people a, an opportunity to have alcohol during prohibition well the silk road gives you an opportunity to have the things that are prohibited um safely and verifiably uh, over the internet, you know, so you don't have to go into some back alley to get what you're looking for, and then have an unreliable source and a, a bad experience. You know, this is just as easy as Amazon. And remember, alcohol kills far more people a year, but pot is illegal, and pot is by far the most common thing sold on the drug on the Silk Road. Number nine. This might seem a little obvious, but it's worth an entire bullet point. It's impossible to serve two life sentences. Just let that sink in. <laughs> it's totally political. This is about sending a message. It's not about, oh, well, this guy's so bad. He really needs to, you know, we got to make sure he st stays away. And by the way, I forgot to mention he has no chance of parole. So this is v political. Uh, life without parole went even beyond the prosecution's request that the judge impose a sentence, quote, substantially above the mandatory minimum. In fact, in the Southern District of New York, where Ross's trial occurred, um, they, they have a reputation for relatively lenient sentencing, with around 75% of cases receiving less than federal sentencing guidelines. So... As if that weren't enough, you know, this is the case. He's, he's serving two life sentences, totally political. Uh, it's a way for the judge to, you know, pad her resume and, and really get a, a pat on the back from the, the, her political masters uh, who waged the war on drugs and the war on peaceful people like you and me. Uh, number 10, finally, jury nullification can bring Ross back. Yes, the case being made itself could also bring Ross back, uh, but this is an important one to keep in mind because, you know, even if the government is able to make the case that Ross uh, ran the Silk Road and um, that the things that he did were Ill illegal technically, I think the morality of the jury could set Ross free by saying, look, your laws stink and they're doing more harm than good. Let this guy free. He's already been in jail for a year, or actually since 2013. So three years in jail, time served. I mean, let this guy go. Um, you've done enough damage. You've wasted enough taxpayer money. And the jury nullification, it's about pro protecting, protecting what's right by giving the jury information about their rights as jurors. And so everyone serving on a jury, including you, has the right to vote not guilty in a case where the law is bad or when punishment would do more damage than the alleged crime. So that, plus the facts and an appeal, gives me hope for freeing Ross. I want you, if you've been inspired by Ross's actions, to donate to the Free Rossathon, uh, it's an investment in a few a freer future for all of us. And remember, Ross didn't get a fair trial, so I have a lot of hope for this appeal. When the facts are put before the jurors, I believe they are going to instantly do the right thing 
and set Ross free. You know, Ross is a hero and a political prisoner of the drug war. And at worst, he ran, ran an honest website. And at best, he opened the door to a peaceful marketplace where prohibition had once been. He should be honored and rewarded and free. The larger impact of this case as it relates to you and me is that if people accept the results of the case as they stand, then we have no internet freedom. If someone can be arrested for what other people do on a website you host, then there's no free speech, and we can't let that stand. The next biggest impact is we can't allow the filthy feds to claim the moral high ground in the war on drugs. They're not just causing victims. They're doing unthinkable harm to individuals, and we can't let that stand either. So Ross Albrecht is now serving and appealing a double life sentence for all nonviolent charges based on his alleged role in the Silk Road marketplace. It's an enormous miscarriage of justice. For more on this, go to freeross.org.